Good morning. Now, before I start, I know that Jehovah's name can trigger trauma in those who have been hurt by Jehovah's Witnesses. But we might bear in mind what it says in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 26. Yes, there are wicked men among my people. In wickedness, they go to any lengths. So see how you get on with this. Now, Jehovah's name is shrouded in the mists of time. So I want to go back to the earliest document that we have because there are many and varied ideas as to where Jehovah's name came from. Now here's the first document that is ever recorded since humanity was created. And it's heavy, but there we go. Look, can you can you see that? Now, obviously, it's copied and it has been translated. What we need to bear in mind in, with translation is it's not an exact science. So consequently, you'll have various translations of these old documents. But this is one translation and I'll try and read it to you. It says here, These are the births of the heavens and of the earth, when they were created in the day that Jehovah was making earth and heavens. That's the first recorded mention of Jehovah's name. It's the oldest we have. So if somebody wants to tell you that the name came from a tribe or whatever, they borrowed the name, not the other way round. So who wrote those records? Now, it could have been Adam, but I like to think it was Seth. Now, could Adam write? Now, it seems very likely. <laughs> Why do I say this? Because in Genesis chapter 2, it says that God gave Adam a job. He was to name all the animals. And it says that the man gave names to all the cattle, all the domestic animals, all the birds of heaven, and all the wild beasts. It took him decades to do it, and there were hundreds, if not thousands, of names. It seems likely to me that he wrote them down for his children. Now, there are other records, and I'd like to read you the start of one of them. It's in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible, because there are various ideas as to translation. And this one says, This is the book, or the written record, the history of the generations of the offspring of Adam. And I'll put below references to the start of other documents. Now these documents were very important legal documents. They would have been preserved. Noah was going to go through a catastrophe now, if we were going through a, a difficult trauma time, we would make sure that we had our passport with us. So Noah would have preserved these documents, handed them down through Shem, possibly to Abraham. And it seems that Moses compiled Genesis from these earlier documents. So is Jehovah the correct pronunciation? No, of course it isn't. But then neither is Jeremiah or Joseph or Joshua. These are not correct pronunciations of Hebrew names. But we've translated them into English. And in English, we know what we're talking about. We know that either Jehovah or Yahweh, we're talking about the Creator. Now, did Jesus use Jehovah's name? Now, the early Christians only had the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. And in the early versions of this Greek translation, the Septuagint, it seems that they did put Jehovah's name. But what they did was they put it in Hebrew in a Greek text. And that presented a problem because the Greek text goes from left to right Hebrew goes from right to left. And the, some Greek-speaking people couldn't read Hebrew, so it didn't work. So later translations of the Septuagint put in Lord in, in Greek instead of the Hebrew 
tetragrammaton. But if Jesus had the early Septuagint, when he was quoting from, say, Deuteronomy, for instance, in Matthew chapter 22, where he said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, he might well have read, you must love Jehovah or Yahweh, your God. What's more important than how we pronounce the name is what it represents. Jehovah God is the creator, the one who loves us dearly. And I don't know why, because we keep upsetting him day after day. He's extremely patient with us. He's the God of prophecy, has very kindly told us the end from the beginning. And that's far more important. Jesus, when he was referring to God, called him his father. And I must admit, I do tend to call God father now. But whatever we call him, he loves us dearly and we keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you all.